Community. 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 Short. Welcome to the Community Voice. I'm your host, Katie Roach. Today's show is just one part in a series of conversations with community members concerning the November 6th vote on the 21 ordinance. The debate over the age that bar patrons may be allowed in Iowa City bars is not a new issue to Iowa City. But what is significant this time around is that voters will decide whether the 21 ordinance will be passed into law. Meaning that, if the 21 ordinance is passed into effect, patrons of bars in Iowa City will have to be 21 years old in order to be in a bar after 10 p.m. or face a $250 ticket. Right now, Iowa City has a 19 ordinance in effect, stating that 19 and 20 year olds must vacate bars by 10 p.m. or face that $250 ticket. In this Community Voice series, we will hear from Community Voice viewers like you who are both opposed to and in favor of adopting this mandate. Stay tuned to City Channel 4 to learn more about this important issue and remember to vote on November 6th. I'm Daryl Woods and I own the Sanctuary, which has been in business since 1972 in Iowa City and, amongst other things, provides live music. And one of the things the ordinance will do is it will reduce the number of people that can attend live music performances and will affect the viability of live music in clubs in Iowa City. Uh, it's not that we make money off of uh, the underage students drinking, it's we make money off of the cover charge and the bands make the money off of the cover charge and that will greatly hurt that. Why are you opposed to the 21 ordinance going into effect? The biggest one has for me to do with the fact that I'm a musician. I've been living in Iowa City for almost 30 years, not quite, 28 years. And part of the culture in Iowa City has always been about live music, the young people coming out to the clubs to hear the music, for me, you know, and where I stood. And um, it would affect me both as a teacher, my ability to offer opportunities for the students to, to get some club experience playing and gigging and doing stuff. And it affects my pocketbook. And it also is hard on uh, the concept we'll probably close some bars down or some clubs down that have live music and or even people that don't. Uh, I never tell my students that they have to go to a club. Uh, I can't make them go. If they don't want to go, they don't go. I never encourage them to drink. That's not the point. But when it comes to performing, for instance, for students, it's, a real, it's the real world. It's not the classroom. It's a great thing. I actually had an article done on me. Nobody knows this, but I was director of jazz studies briefly from 90 to 93 at the University of Iowa. And during that time period, and, and for a long time after that, we used to have what were the midterms and finals for our combos held here, like here at the Sanctuary or various other clubs around uh, Iowa City. And Downbeat actually did an article on me at one time, and, and uh, Mark Grottimo was in that group, and some other people, Mitch Town and Scott Barnum. And they came and took a picture of us playing in here, and they did a nice article on the fact that I made my kids come out and do midterms and finals in the club, and they thought that was so cool. And the reason being is, is when you come to a club, you, you're responsible for everything. Uh, if you forget your music or your music stand, tough. Uh, rather than have a protective audience, uh, the audience that comes to hear you Although you may have some of your friends there, could be people that are checking you out seriously going, well, that was not bad or that wasn't very good or, you know. And so there's a different vibe that goes into playing live music in a real club. And I just would hate to see that go away. There will be some uh, live music venues that will probably suffer a lot. There will be bands that suffer a lot. Um, it depends on the venue. It depends on the band, what their crowd is. I look back to when I came here to school, um, as a freshman, I was able to play in the bars immediately and, you know, frankly, I learned more playing with older cats in the bars than I learned at the School of Music and, you know, you, you don't get enough performance uh, experience, you know, sitting in a practice room and, and playing a half dozen concerts a semester, uh, you need that, you need, especially if you're, you know, into the improvisation thing, you need uh, you need you need a lot of experience, and the bars provide that. There's n there's nothing to take the place. You know, I would not have learned to play if I hadn't been allowed to play in the bars. I can't imagine in Iowa City where where undergrads can't 
have that resource. It really is an educational resource. And the people that are pushing this ordinance either don't realize that or they don't care. As far as the music scene goes, it is not a requirement to consume alcoholic beverages to enjoy music. I enjoy music a lot and don't do so. We have a lot of young people that come in and like to dance and socialize. Uh, last weekend, for example, we had the, the night football game and Mediacom did not have that on our cable system, so a lot of people wanted to come down and watch it on the satellite TVs and the plasmas and stuff in the bars. Well, you know, obviously with a 21 ordinance, since that was a night game, none of the young, younger students could have come in and watched the, the football game. Uh, we also have a comedy show on Wednesday nights. Um, 21 ordinance would probably make the comedy show go away because without enough people coming in to see the show, can't afford to pay the comedians, things like that. Many of the businesses in downtown Iowa City that serve more than one purpose, for example, the pool hall that's down there at uh, College Street Billiards, he has an exemption to the 19 ordinance because he's providing entertainment the way a bowling alley would. Uh, there are other restaurants that have music late at night that are providing entertainment and they get to have an exemption from the 19 ordinance that you can be in there after 10 o'clock. But you have to have that balance of where your income is coming from. So, but if you're a bar that's basically a big time drinking location and you try to characterize yourself as something else, it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to do that music venue. But I will say that, for example, in Ames, which has a 21 ordinance, when that went into effect, several of the big bar operations figured out a way to divide their venue where you can have one side of the bar that's of legal age, 21, and the other side is underage. The two can't interact. There's a screen between them, but they both listen to the same music. And if this goes to effect, it will actually affect the population. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when people come out to, to hear live music, if it's some of the student body, that's part of the, the tickets getting into the club. So if someone's playing at a club, and let's say 100 people are going to come hear them, and half of them are under the age of 21, if the under 21 people go away, that's half the revenue for the band. Or it's half the revenue to the club owner. It's pretty simple math. Um, there was just an article in the Daily Iowan today that the university police, 58%, I believe, of, of their arrests and their tickets that are written are not even college students. That's university police, you know, that are saying this. So most of our problems tend to develop from the million visitors that come in for our sports in our community, which we love to have. But I think we're very fortunate that we have all these entertainment environments with their staffing to help our police to handle the crowds and what goes on with those. If you really want to see binge drinking go away, get rid of football. It ain't gonna happen, excuse my English, it's just not gonna happen. They're confused about what will really happen. Because if they think, and here's an argument you might get into, a lot of the kids that would come to hear the music that we're doing here aren't particularly interested in getting drunk. Here at the sanctuary. You yeah, or, or just anywhere to go hear live music. That's not their MO, that's not what they're about. If they, if they change the law, the kids, that we're bringing fake IDs to the sports column or wherever they're going to do that are still going to bring fake IDs to the sports column. All the kids that weren't trying to break the law, that weren't binge drinking, according to this, I don't even believe in using that word, but drinking too much or whatever's going on, won't be able to go out at all and they weren't the ones causing the problems anyway. So we're like a, a sad kind of uh, uh, casualty of this battle amongst the prohibitionists in Iowa City versus those who would do other things. So I feel like musicians are kind of caught in crosshairs here of this whole thing. The segment that you just watched is just one in a series of conversations with community members concerning the November 6th vote on the 21 ordinance. Stay tuned to City Channel 4 for other perspectives and more information on this issue from community voice viewers like you. Community. 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 Community.